The nation's capital is the site of tonight's great rivalry, and no one's had more success there than St. John's Lou Carnesecca. In 1985, Chris Mullen led a Redmond upset of number two Georgetown. Last year, it was Shelton Jones tomahawking the Hoyas. Tonight, Jason Williams leads the charge against Georgetown, who once again is ranked second with a perfect blend of youth and experience. Freshman Alonzo Mourning has been a devastating shot blocker, while senior Charles Smith continues to be one of the nation's top clutch performers. Maryland, where tonight a crowd better than 12,000 has turned out for the resumption of one of the Big East better rivalries, St. John's and Georgetown. Mike Gorman, Bill Raftery set to go. Bill, a quick look at the game notes. That's amazing. It's uh, not easy to beat Georgetown any place, but St. John's certainly successful here. 16 straight cap center, so a couple of streaks on the line there. And again, it, only 10 games. Georgetown has lost 10 games in the last eight years in this building. Alonzo Mourning will have to do with a lot more wins before he's through. Oh, he will. Impact player. Sean Muto is going to be starting at center. We expect to see Robert Werdan and Billy Singleton fairly quickly off the St. John's bench. Louis playing with about seven guys this year. John Thompson, as usual, playing with everybody who came. And here come the Hoyts. Man to man, St. John's. Now, Muto's liable to get fouls. Mike Early, too. Banging Alonzo. Thrust on Smith. That's an interesting matchup. Morning kicks it right back to Bryant. And that press played Dana Barrows well the weekend. Inside, Morning turns, long hook won't go, but Muto picks up number one. Now, not much more you can do than force Alonzo Morning out that far. You'll see here Muto using his bulk and strength, tries to shove him a little bit, forces the miss, but that's all he can do. Once you're caught behind him, I think he's going to deliver a lot of blows. I have not seen too many freshmen who play with the smile on their face that Alonzo does most of the time. This kid really enjoys playing the game. He, he sort of takes you out of your game with a, a terrific amount of enjoyment. Alonzo, we really can't tell you anything. You probably don't know about this kid. Everybody's player of the year last year. He's already attacking some of Patrick Ewing's records here at Georgetown in the categories of blocked shots. Smith out on Buchanan. Georgetown does a good job of being in the passing lane, particularly in the low post. And not that time by Turner. Oh, nice little turnaround. Tap won't go from Seeley, and it's going to be an offensive goaltend as he get up above the rim. Quick to the basketball. Malik, exceptional in his ability to get his feet quickly. Smith again to set up the Hoya offense. Jason Buchanan waiting for Dwayne Bryant. And again, Matt Brusk, a physical player on Charles Smith, and they right away go again to Alonzo. Little move on the baseline comes up short this time. Jason Williams all over the rebound. They ran a single double for Charles Smith, and then a two man play Smith into Morning. It's got to be defended a little bit better by St. John's. Smith will be aggressive on Buchanan. See if they have the patience now. Another Sealy with an air ball turnaround. Freshman shot. St. John's back quickly, though, on defense. They have to balance the floor, and they have to rebound defensively. They can't give second efforts. Third straight time to Alonzo. The jump hook goes down. I guess the only satisfaction is the other guys aren't beating you if Alonzo's getting... There's the 1 4 offense against the press, and they will take it to the goal. Won't go, and tap won't go as Seeley was there again. Morning clears. Hoyers have got some numbers here. There's Jackson in the corner. Nice job by Turner sure, off the offensive board. Sure was. Screen out. Oh, look at Morning calming things down with the hand. John Turner trying to take it at Williams, and Jason Williams picks up a foul. Uh, they're gambling by playing behind, not three-quartering. Now, Jason has been painted warning defensively, trying to help out Sean Muto. And that time, he got caught right behind John Turner. Two players for Luke Karnasek that he cannot afford to get in any kind of serious foul trouble. They would be Jason Williams and Jason Buchanan. 
Now against the press, Luke Onaseka will take it to the goal if it's Williams or Seeley. Other than that, they'll beat the timeline and get set up, Mike. If you have not seen John Turner shoot a free throw before, our cameramen have to go very wide to keep the ball in the frame. He really launches it. Never play the old days. He would have hit the rafters. Nobody checked the shooter out. Good play by Turner. Almost came up with it. The Hoyas up by four here early. I read in the papers, John delighted he can just coach now after all the legal hassle with the proposal 42. Great impact on it. Williams again short. This Seeley, who's just a presence on that offensive board, first time he's converted. He's had two easy ones, too. That one the third. St. John's just one of six here in the early going, but they're just down two. St. John's will be about that 18-foot line defensively where they're letting it in here. Now they're trapping. Morning, nice move. Good night. They'll take you and your family to the hole when he gets that close. Enables the Hoyas to set up in their press. Retrap. Udo, good look for Seeley. Williams on the cut. And the block behind there, huh? Morning got the foul, though. Yeah, he did. Jaron Jackson got all ball. John Thompson into the game quickly, but they will permit Seeley and Williams. It's Alonzo in the front now as he tries to play. Look at the hustle from the rear by Jaron Jackson. All ball. They gave it to Morning. And so Jason Williams will step to the line. Jason Williams, I got to say, is the best kept secret in the Big East. I mean, this kid's having a terrific year. Well, that body alone rivals Matt Bruss. So he's built himself up since last year. His confidence level soaring. He's their go-to guy now. Guess I got to get him a pair of socks, right? They got a lane violation. Step in by Muto. John's not able to give away any points here. Louis goes where? There. Yeah, he's, right in, there. he's in early. Yeah. Gee, if he went any place, he should have stepped in in front of Morning, right? <laughs> Position defense. They don't gamble. They got the offensive foul on Morning. Yes, second as he tried to jump out for the screen for Smith, and that gets the Kembe Mutombo immediately up off the bench. And Alonzo Morning, who had five of Georgetown's six points, sits down with two fouls. Hoyas by seven with 14.31 to go here first half. Mike Gorman, along with Bill Raftery, first half of Big Monday. St. John's really struggling from the field right now. That 2-3 zone earlier, the trouble with his zone is you don't have definite defensive checking out responsibilities. And Lou Conaseca is somewhat fearful, I think, of the offensive rebounding. Bell out top, now Charles Smith looking inside at Turner. Back man to man. Winston hits in the lane. Can't turn him in like that. Jason Buchanan did it before to Bryant this time, Winston. Rust just keeps pushing it up a step or two, waiting for some pressure now where Dan helps at half court. I don't know if you've played in games where you've got to worry about jump shots and hook shots when you release, but Utombo staying on the floor beautifully. Buchanan will try his first shot of the day. Look at Good Seeley on the offensive board. Block by Bell. Fifth block for the Hoyas on the break. Charles Smith scoops it down and Turner missed it. We're Dan up ahead. Buchanan, a little room, takes it. Got it. That's one of the few they didn't get. Georgetown very active, anticipating. Almost had another one. But you got to get easy baskets against Georgetown. They're just too tenacious in the backcourt defensively. You got to make them pay for it. Now in the half court set. Looking inside at Mutombo. We're doing a better job on Mutombo. Turner will take the pull up. Gets the roll. Confidence stroke. Remember earlier, a couple of weeks ago, talking to Ed Spriggs, who's the conditioning coach, strength coach, said, is there anybody in the program like this guy in your memory? He said, no, maybe me. John is a oh, big kid. Good Winston, yep. Just stepped right in. Great pass. Charles Smith is so sharp when it comes to exactly what type 
of shot to deliver. Seeley, of course, looks bad here, but Robert Wardan did not show the ball, and then he didn't take off and sprint. But Seeley takes Winston out, and look at Charles Smith. That can't get much higher on the glass and still count. But Wardan compounded it. You've got a turn and sprint of his learning process. An 11 point Hoya lead here. 12 minutes, 44 seconds still to play first half. Five points for Charles Smith. The early Mark Tillman comes in. Smith will sit down. Tillman had a strong game on Saturday as he came in and really destroyed the University of Connecticut with his outside shooting after Connecticut had played about 37 minutes of great basketball to lead the Hoyas for just about the entire game. Well, the problem for Luna is when he gets too far behind, he's got to change his game plan. When you want to play slow or control the game, you've got to stay tied and got to hold that side. Sam Jefferson will pick it up. The free throw shooting champ, huh? That's made a couple right. of big ones. Sam made two, two big free throws. <laughs> Louis cannot be happy with the way his club is shooting so far, 2 of 14. Now, that won't get you too many second games on a Saturday afternoon. But again, if you're trying to control the game and the opponent takes you away from your game plan, all of a sudden there's a shootout. St. John's can't afford that with Georgetown. Williams inside in a lot of traffic, and he put it down and drew a foul. Good step across in there. A lot of these kids are used to playing in heavy traffic. He just hasn't touched the ball enough right there. I don't think you can let him catch the ball. Good step across. Look at the strength, too. Jason really improving his play. Game in and game out. Not only is he leading St. John's, he is number one in the Big East in lead games in field goal percentage. Not bad for a guy getting 20 points a game. Maturing. Here's the 1-3-1. The ambush, once again, trying to generate a steal or at least a forced or quick shot. Rebounding's a problem on the wings. Tombo in the corner, kicking it out, Tillman. Slows it down a little bit, too, which is conducive to kind of second style. Georgetown, 25 seconds now off the shot clock. Unusual for them. Winston penetrates again. Or Dan takes down the rebound. Can't let that penalty. You gotta pinch as the guy dribbles or approaches you. A little two, three now. John Thompson had gone man to man most of the Now, believe it or not, now this, in a sense, St. John's can play a little slower, pry. So while John Thompson rests his club and forces the outside shot, it helps Luke Conasek as well. 18 on the shot clock. Seeley will try. Misses outside, rebound Bell. Malik looking for a three. Bell on the wing. Did Bell match up. Score. Did not match up. St. John's got back in balance, but didn't step out from the three second area to match up. That'll take the air out of a little bit. Yeah. 11 point Georgetown lead, but St. John's will continue to play this pace. They're not going to suddenly start to run it up and down. Touch Touch shot. Shot. Yes, it was. No bounce. Tip Seeley. Nice hustle play. Uh, Jason has to be somewhat patient. Can't just rush into it. Rush. Good look inside for Wardan. How about switching off hands, too? Robert Wardan, if he shot it righty, it would have been negated. Wardan, a good looking freshman who suffered a calf injury that took him out of about four or five games. And he, Malik Seeley, and Jason Buchanan are the building blocks for Luke Conn II. Three freshmen on the floor in the cap center against the number two team in the country. That's pretty good. Impressive. We're Dan letting him on. Oh, get the ball. I, I, inside defense is not as aggressive as I think it should be, Mikey. In other words, Morning's not in there. It doesn't mean you have the night off. I think you still got to play aggressively. Dwayne Bryant and Charles Smith are going to come back in for Georgetown, and Bell and Tillman will sit down. Everybody's matched up in the press. Mutombo's deep at the half court line. Now, they really haven't raised the level of pressure. No. But somewhat passive for Georgetown. But St. John's, on the other hand, has, has done a pretty nice job here, even though they're down nine of kind of getting the game in the pace that they want. Other than that one little burst there we had from the Hoyas, it's been a St. John's pace game. Brian can really 
make you change sides of the floor, step in and get the charge off the dribble. Look at this pressure, denying the next pass. Rust will take it back out. He's waving Buchanan to come out. Now Rust will set the play. Man to man. Where Dan is a good passer. The crowd clapping the Hoya defense, but St. John's still with good 16 kick. on the shot clock. Where Dan's open, missed it, and the rebound comes to Turner off to Smith. Good run, and they got a hold here. I don't know if they give it to Matt Press. Yeah, in the middle of the floor, Mutombo was running. Matt Press gave it up. He thought he was beaten. They had pretty good numbers. Matt didn't have to do that. It's the sixth foul on St. John's, and we'll see Billy Singleton for the first time tonight. A player who has had himself an outstanding year for St. John's, playing primarily off the bench, but averaging nearly double figures, right about nine points a game, five rebounds. Charles open. Didn't handle that out of bounds too well again. I think Billy Singleton is the single reason that St. John's has done well. I and mean, everything else seems to be falling in place. The freshman improving, but Billy just control seems to know how to win. Where Dan showing nice ability to bring the ball up to. Charles Smith just won't give Jason Buchanan an inch. <laughs> no. He doesn't give many people an inch. Always good pressure on the ball, which makes the next pass difficult. Russ open for the jumper. That's a down screen by Werdan. I don't know if they give it to Bryant or not. Point to Bryant. But uh, that's a play they run very effectively. Basically for Brust, occasionally for Seeley, where the center goes down and pins the defensive man playing Brust. So Luke Karnaseka gets a fresh 45 on the shot clock. 8.52 to go in the half. Georgetown by 11, 21 to 10. 2-3 on the out of bounds. Here's the diagonal kick. All that work. Oh. Won't go down for word, Dan. Look at his pass. Brian. Oh, Smith. bullet for Jackson and a foul on Singleton. Great run. I've seen passes saved just to get it in bounds, but leading to a break reminiscent of up in Providence the other night where they threw it and Charles Smith ended up with a left or kicking it off for Providence. But look at this save. And Charles Smith without. Boom. Right on the money, one bounce and banging. Bill Singleton giving it up. Ooh. Singleton, his first foul, will put Jaron Jackson on the line. That's a feel, Mike. They just know their teammate's going to get down the floor, fill the lane. And of course, you don't want to save and throw it back at your basket, exactly. which helped Bryant. Exactly. Jackson, a heck of an offensive player who's been struggling of late. Only 10 of 30 in his last four or five games. And Tombo comes away with that miss. They do the little things. Miss free throws, they'll come up with it. The Hoy is very active for anything that's for free. 12 point Georgetown lead. Smitty looks inside of the Tombo. This is all without mourning. Here it goes to Dikembe. It's stripped away from behind by Wardan. Got to bring that down and protect it. 2-3. You know, I know that score looks dominating for Georgetown, but you have the feeling that St. John's is a jump shot or two away. Well, they, 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 it should be more. Nice defense on the baseline. The St. Jared Jackson is out of bounds. John Clark and there with the call. 7.54 left to go here first half. In control. They're up a dozen. Normally sets things up here to tip out and lead the fast break the other way. And of course, the great giveaway by Charles Smith. Pretty basketball. Well, what do you give? Didn't him? get the basket. I'll give him a six on that. I'll we'll have to check with the Eastern block. Down low, Williams won't go for him, trying to keep it alive. And I think he committed a foul. Yeah, he did. It. He did. Uh, a look at the meter now on. I just don't think they're after it yet, Georgetown. Do you? No, I don't think they've really turned it up yet, but we're going to give them a six on that last one. Well, it's early. Uh, they can get some tens before the night's over. They got a 12-point lead here. and I, I think they get them in spurts, too, Georgetown. Yes. They get that goal to break away. All of a sudden, they're in their stance. All their preparation of rotating, and, of course, the three-man stepping in, the four-man at half court, they occasionally come up with about three or four in a row. And Dikembe hits first. 
This young man was the most valuable player in the Washington Summer League, and that's some pretty fast company he was playing with in that Summer League. I read some statements by John Thompson saying that he feels by the time he's finished, he's going to be a prospect for the next level. And right there, too many second chances. That guy might be too, John Turner, who's just a bull underneath, and now Luke Arnasek is going to take for the Hoyas. They have extended it to 15, 25, 10. A little harder press that time, Mike. Singleton, good look. Williams, who takes it in, gets, oh, 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 offensive foul, and it's his third. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Unless Jason lifted his arms, Jason Williams with the Move baseline and the slide in. There was contact, no question. Mutombo initiated it. And does that put Luke on a second in a terrible hole? They, they're in one anyhow, but that adds to it. Another shovel full right there, no question. Bryant looks inside. Buchanan's got him defensively. You've got to score, though, Mike. St. John's unable at the other end. You've got to ring the bell against Georgetown. They just tighten it. Each time down, they come up with the loose ones. And of course, the pressure. John Turner, a great beggar in a low post. Look at him present himself for the ball. Quick turnaround, won't go down, where Dan clears it strongly. And here comes Buchanan up quick to Seeley. He's got a little daylight. Can't get the dunk to go down. He's had about three of those not go. Charles, show me something, Charlie. A little flare. <laughs> oh, slowly. Look at this. Right now, the reaction. Not good by Georgetown. I thought they had a steal. I thought Tillman had gotten down in time. But right now, a little extra flare for Charles Smith. He beats you basically. Then when you add a little pizzazz to it, one-handed off the dribble. And that is a major league. Pass. <laughs> I'm trying to get Charles's eye out there right now. He's trying to keep a straight face. He was looking <laughs> up to see the replay. <laughs> uh, come on, give us a smile, Charles. You can't do that and look serious. He will at tape time. Well, he is taking over the Big East, the knee from that guard spot. Oh, he is just. That's a kid. I mean, everyone's heard the stories about how John said uh, you'll never play if you come here. They only play defensively and at the end of games. But for defensive purposes, boy, did he change his opinion about him. Yeah, we're looking at a guy right now, Bill, that I'm beginning to think is starting to move up into that uh, top of the guards in the country as far as the NBA is concerned. Well, he made the Olympic team, so he's got to be doing a lot of things right the past couple of years. 27-11, Dwayne Bryant hits a quick two. Can't let them get down. That was a five, six second drill. Dribble penetration score. And right now, St. John's on the ropes. Good pressure. Back to the two three. Yep, Terrence Mullen has come in for a while to run the show for Luke on a second. Terrence, the younger brother of Chris Mullen. Good shooter. Good luck. Singleton stays with it. Seeley the follow. And Mutombo, even at the midfield goal, flailing away. Great effort. And look at that. Mullen got knocked over. Mutombo. You don't want to get that guy's way. No. But he's loving all these minutes. Alonzo who? <laughs> Formidable up front people, huh? John has a lot of answers, as usual. Now, maybe more so up front, I think, than in quite a while. Bryant outside. Good rebound where Dan. Quick kick to Seeley. Good now recognition. Malik's going to pull it up a bit. Now, right now, it's John's game in terms of tempo. He doesn't mind them taking as much time as they want. He's got the lead. We're Dan down on the baseline. Brush two fakes. You got to do three or four and still come up empty. Here comes Charles Smith on the break. Mullen is back. Smith leaves it for Brian. Good look for Winston. Nice move. Good spin. Reverse pivot. And right now, Charles Smith, he's the conductor. The Bob Fossey, the choreographer. I think Larry Limbo has got a foul there on Charles Smith. Yes, he does. 
Uh, the first on Smitty. About the only thing he's done wrong. Not too many people agreed with him. 31 to 13. The Hoyas by 18. They're over the limit, so we're going to come up and shoot some free throws. John Turner, Milton Bell over on the Georgetown bench. There's Luke on a second. I think the inside defense now in trouble, letting the ball come in, and more importantly, the dribble penetration. Normally, St. John's does not let you in there. They close it down. He better make it. His brother won't speak to him, huh? Chris having a heck of a year at Golden State. He sure is, Don Nelson. Tons has given Lou some good minutes. Occasionally he'll struggle, play like a youngster, but uh, gives Buchanan a rest. And I think he can contribute before the year's out. He can shoot it, mm -hmm. for sure. St. John's badly in need of somebody to shoot it right now, down 16. Well, again, I think they've got to have good perimeter defense and then scrape if it goes inside. Clear out for Charles. Smith will take it. That's going to be short. Not a good one. Should be Georgetown ball. Good call. Yeah, it was Terrence Mullen flailed away. Wayne Bryant underneath. Smith inside. Where Dan tried to come over the top. And Tombo lost it off his foot. Good hustle play, Mullen. Sure. And it will be St. John's ball on the alternating possession. Excellent hustle by Terrence Mullen there. Offered it up. Yep, and he paid for it too. You know, Robert Ward Dan trying to get the basketball. He really swipes at it. He's liable to hit Mutombo right in the head. Got one steal earlier. Jason Buchanan's going to come back in for St. John's. St. John's set for the press, even though Georgetown is back in a 2 3. Louis taking no chances. Malik Seeley will take the rest as John Turner also checks in. And Sam Jefferson will sit down. Michael, there haven't been too many loose balls tonight. No. That being the first one. Georgetown able to convert, get the ball where they want. Who we getting a look at Jason Buchanan now off the ball. We've seen number 12. That's what he did. He was a scorer in high school. Gets it down in the corner. Turner quickly out at him. You know, this is easier said than done with Dan down low, and he'll get a foul. He's got some good inside moves, good jump shooter, Utombo, at a disadvantage. I thought they were going to put the pressure on the outside shooting of St. John's. They let it in easily. Luke on the second, never really a proponent of the three-point shot, but I would think St. John's needs to take a couple of threes here if they're going to keep trying to force it inside. they got to give it reason to get out of it. You think they can change this early? I mean, I think you just got to play. Hope you get your composure. Make these so you don't have any empty trips. Because uh, John Thompson's club is really rounding into shape, I think. Now, you had the Connecticut game, and Connecticut played a fantastic ball game. Yes, they did. Can't play any better. Everybody raved about him. Of course, the Syracuse game, too. Great win for them. There's a great shot there. Louie trying to recruit Charles Smith for another four years. <laughs> he would <like. laughs> That's the only way that he has had. An outstanding career. Louis said, keep him. He didn't want to let him back out. St. John's with 3.35 to go here in the half. Needs to put a couple of hoops together. Singleton, a couple of good moves. And Mutombo stayed home. Unbelievable. Six pass. blocks for Mutombo. Turner. Terrence Mullen picks up a hard foul. And John Turner sent him about 20 feet off the court. I don't know how you teach that. Butombo staying on the floor, just letting the shot pump fake all you want. You almost got to take it right to him and lean in. All the pump fakes in the world negated by good balance. And again, they get the ball to Charles Smith for something creative. Nice and soft with the blocks. No, it keeps it in play. But when you think of it, Warren is wonderful that way too. Yep. So it's got to be drilled. I just like kids have a soft touch with a dribble. Forget a shot and a shot block. I'd be happy to get it over the timeline. John Turner quietly having a strong night here. Eight points and six rebounds. Where Dan takes down the miss. 
Luke Seeley up off the St. John's bench, looking to get back in for these final three minutes of the first half. And the Redmen need a hoop or two. Singleton down on the blocks. Gives nice. it to Wood there. By Matombo! Uh, again! Ooh. Again by Matombo! Don't bring him in here! Strictly a perimeter game. Reaction. Position. Stay it on the floor. You're not going to get anything in low, Michael. It's got to be a jump shot. And they may, he may get that, too. The Kembe Mutombo from Kinshasa Zaire. Oh, it again. Smith on the break. Blind pass. Turner picked off Buchanan. Tillman slaps it away out of bounds. Even that turnover. Did you see the speed? of transition, turn it over, get back, try and deflect the ball. It's not gonna be easy for St. John's to get back in this. Right here, it's special delivery. Zaire style. Sending everything out of there. Well, they have sent it in on dunks, why not on blocks? Return to sender. And the 12,000 or so here at the Cap Center now alive, Singleton got two. And Billy was shocked that he was all alone. St. John's down 14, 2.20 to go. You'd think they were down about 34 the way this game was played if you didn't look at the scoreboard. Sensational plays, but a few trips where there wasn't a conversion and that, of course, enables St. John's to hang relatively close. A little motion now. Chombo wants the ball on the offensive end. They ought to give it to him. Sure, just for what he's doing at the other got steps. They do. John Turner just came charging through there. Who wants to step in on him? And they got a few of the rejectors here. Return it back. Uh, Dikembe did wonders for his average tonight. He has eight blocks already. The school record is 11. Give him nine now, they said. If he plays 40, measure the field goal percentage of your team. Pretty mobile, too, inside that 2 3. He very, really moves around the floor well. Rust will try a three outside, and he got it. Well, all of a sudden, St. John's hanging tough. You mentioned it. A lot of action by Georgetown, but you got to finish, got to complete the trip. 11 point game near Steel Buchanan. Winston in trouble. And a man. St. John's putting a little 8-1 run together here in the face of all those rejections. Pretty good composure. Yes, they're, oh, they're always composed. Yeah. They really are. I'll tell you, I don't know how. That was awesome. Winston, a runner with 15 on the shot clock, where Dan clears it. Not a good shot. St. John's get back to single digits here, and Seeley got two in a fouls call. Well, that's the guy they want to take it to the goal. He missed a few early, but boy, that gets... St. John's right back at it, and bad shots bury you. Not a good one by Georgetown that time. Stick around at halftime. John Saunders will be by, and he's got lots of info for you. The new AP Top 20 is out. A feature on the Pittsburgh forwards, and a preview of that big one coming up later on in the Big Monday. Tim Brando, Dick Vitale are standing by. Indiana, Michigan. Go get him, Timmy. They will be pumped. Season, some losses against some good clubs, but right now, moving up in the polls. Seeley drains the free throw. He's got seven. More importantly, St. John suddenly down just eight here. In a game that Georgetown will probably use large segments of for their highlight film. <laughs> oh, they were awesome. Here's the down and through. Use some clock here. About a five second discrepancy. 24 in the shot clock. Looking at the game clock. Charles Smith should end up with the ball when they're ready to go, I think. Georgetown needs to shoot it before it gets to five. Jackson has lost it off his leg, and St. John's has got 13 seconds here. Usually good things happen when Charles Smith has the ball. Mutombo getting a little blow now. Gets a great hand. Yeah, he should. Deservedly. Nine blocks and a half, huh? That'll get your attention. Buchanan taking his time as they go under 10. Matty 
Rust penetrates. The runner won't go down. Loose ball, Charles Smith. A little late with the shot. Wouldn't have counted, and the Georgetown lead is only eight. Mutombo, an excellent half, but it's Georgetown 32, St. John's 24. To look at some more numbers from that first half, St. John's by just five of 25, and this is a group, as you can see, that usually is up there around 56%. So if you look back, you probably say, hey, we got to play a better half than we played in that first half. We're only down eight. Malik had a couple of easy ones, yep. including the jam that he didn't make, and of course, Jason Williams in foul problem, so all of a sudden, two-thirds of the front line starting, struggling. So, yeah, sure, you get it in, but I think they're going to have to get it in and get it out quickly because of that man. Dikembe will start the second half on the bench. St. John's closed the first half with an 11-1 to run. The Hoyas did not score a field goal in the last five minutes of that first half. John Turner, unusual to see his name up there, leading the way for Georgetown with eight. Charles Smith has seven. And Malik Seeley on the other side with seven. <laughs> Jason Buchanan, you can see it on the screen, just asked us to say hi to mom and dad up in Syracuse. You got it, Jason. He's loose. You're behind, Jason. What are you talking to us for? <laughs> all right, he's all business again now. Let's see if they can get the ball as easily into Alonzo as they did the first half. Where Dan fighting, making a foul. Yeah, he got one in an elbow, too. Well, that should be a two shot. Let's see. Oh, right here at the end, Robert Wardan emphatically with the elbow. Watch the, as he steps across now, throws him down. I've got to think intentional. Well, they say no, second foul on Wardan, and Williams comes away with the miss underneath. St. John's can get to six. Nearly a walk, but Williams Good. got it. Blocked by Morning. And soft, Michael, you said earlier. Mutombo doing it that morning. Wayne Bryant trying to penetrate. Reach in foul. Might be the word Dan again. I believe so. That's Two quick ones. Number three now on Robert. Well, the pressure, the shot block soft enough right here. This ignites your break now. Everybody look and see all the red shirts under there. All of a sudden, you got the numbers going the other way. Charles Smith takes the pop pass. Come on with the pressure. Turner play. kept it alive, but Seeley was there. That, that play is not defended well. That out of bounds. Charles Smith usually nails it. We're down out the high nice post. Nice back cut. Is Seeley. Jason Williams the follow for two. You mentioned where Dan's passing. Great setup. Malik with a step and cut. The trail of morning takes it in. What do we got? A block on Another Wardan, one. and that's number four. Another one. But the fast pace of the ball, it doesn't enable you to get set defensively. All of a sudden, a wave coming at you. I think it's a good call. Over late and still moving yep. on the angle. A big guy who can get up and down. A coach's delight. Three fouls in the first minute of the second half for Robert Wardan puts him on the bench with four, puts Alonzo Morning on the line. It's a six-point game. The Hoyas the lead. Six point of the night for Morning, who sat down early in the first half with foul trouble. He's a 64% free throw shooter, 13 points a game, eight rebounds, and six blocks. And just think of the play at the end of the year with the two big guys able to compete as they are. You'll see the two of them together, I'm sure, quite a bit. Here's the 1 4 by St. John's. A little more pressure. They haven't been able to get a second trap and one out here at half court. Now, Billy's pretty good with the ball. Yes, he is. Morning. Morning gave him the leg. Just that hesitation froze the defense and then the bounce by. Alonzo's got the smile, but he's also got his third personal foul. Now, Ron Rutledge was telling me today, the assistant for Luke Conaseca, he said, Billy Singleton is an old player. He plays like an old-timer, the way he just dribbled the ball there. Nice. You think there's a break? I'm not sure the way Dikembe's <laughs> playing tonight. Offensively, the Hoyas might lose something, but defensively, they certainly do not. 2-3 right away with him, though. John not very trusting maybe of his matchup man-to-man. -man. 
Jason's begging for the ball. I'm not so sure that's the intelligent approach. And Jason Buchanan knocks down a three outside. And that's the way he shoots. It's a little push. It's a five-point game, 34-29. Georgetown has not scored a field goal in six minutes and 30 seconds. Charles Smith time. He's got to make it happen. He killed his dribble. Was Ryan it? ran away from the ball, too. And St. John's doesn't come out and deny that far. Nice cross. Uh oh Good move. Dwayne Bryant on the baseline. Uh, Jason Buchanan left the luggage. Got to seal it off. Here's Singleton again, the man to break the pressure. A great composure by St. John's to even get back in this thing. Incredible defensive sequences by Georgetown. Buchanan kicks it out, Rust. Forced inside, picked off by the Hoyas, and Buchanan will beat Smith to the ball. Not too many folks will. Watch, watch it, Cat. I thought Charles is going to fake it, go back after him. Pretty good balance by the rookie. Two, three high. It's almost. Look at this cut. Not a good pass again by Matt Prust. You see me very good without the basketball. Bryant leaves it for Smith. Jaron Jackson will try. And here's the first Hoya field goal in about seven minutes. And Charles Smith punishing dribble set it up. Forced the defense back beneath the foul line. Almost a steal. St. John's looking to weather what appears to be a storm brewing here. 16.50 left to go in the game. Seeley fights off Jackson. Williams, good move in the paint. Count it a foul. I think they got Jaron Jackson, the right call, too. That time, he just relaxed a little, moved a little out from the hole, away from the defense. And, of course, the hesitation before the delivery here, he's been trying to get it down, and now he pivots out and, of course, away from the pressure. Jaron Jackson reaching in, but they could use some offense from him. Jason Williams. First foul on Georgetown here in the second half. There have been three called on St. John's. Williams with nine on the night. More importantly, his club within six. Pass and cut off the high post guy. It's a rotation. Jaron Jackson, the pull up, knocks it down. No help on the screen. Malik Sealy looking for Jason Williams. He didn't hedge and present. Buchanan trying to push it up quickly. I have reset. Jaron Jackson out on him defensively. Sealy comes to help. Is Sealy going without the ball? Oh, Matumbo knocked it away. I think you're going to scratch that play with him out there. Smith finds Jackson the trailer. A little jump step. Won't go. Tap Matumbo won't go. Should be Matumbo. Yep. Lean down. He doesn't have to. Even in Zaire, they like to push down on the little guy. Third foul on Dikembe has John Thompson up. 15-53 to go. I haven't seen that next level of pressure by Georgetown. See if they can come up with a steal or a rotation here. Now they stay on their own. Charles denying to Buchanan. Singleton, nice move. Gives it to Seeley. Missed the dunk again, but got a foul. John Turner got in the way. That was aggressive. Billy Singleton, the old-time player, according to Ron Rutledge. Look at this. He can do the spins, the behind the back here on time, and great challenge. It doesn't go down, but it shows that aggressive nature. Malik Seeley out of Brooklyn, New York. He and Robert Wardan had some great battles last year in high school in New York City, now teamed up at St. John's. And think of it, a few years ago you'd be saying, oh, the kid's only a sophomore, he's got 15 games under his belt. And Louis got these two youngsters out banging heads against the best in the country. Walking out of a lot of gyms with their heads held high. Ooh. 12 and 4, the St. John's record coming in. 4 and 2 in Big East play. Sealy, a 70% free throw shooter. And he gets encouraged by the coach. Malik, strong to the goal. Cuts without the basketball well. Pretty good touch. Nice prospect. 
Darren Jackson comes down with a miss. He's got the quick push. So that's the pressure now. He backed everybody in. Didn't get anything, but he just can't regain position well. Constant pressure. And Jackson on the wing. He's had the hot hand. Looked like he wanted it that last trip. Putting his back in. Dwayne Bryant misses the shot. Turner on the offensive board for two. That man's rebound. Carved some area. John Thompson trying to get the pressure organized. And his club not reacting after the made goal. John Turner first in double figures for the Hoyas tonight for 10. And that's what the Georgetown lead is with 15 minutes straight up to go in the basketball game. With Alonzo Mourning on Singleton, he's been able to put the ball up. Alonzo can't put the pressure on him. Ooh, whoa. Tough. You can't. can do a few things, but not get up that high. Force in that one and got a word from Luke on a second. Here comes Dwayne Bryant. Smith playing off the ball. See if they run something for Charles. He got a double on one side. Here's the pop out now. Morning takes it. Hits it. That's I saw him do that against Seton Hall. I mean, when you've got a guy that mobile and that tough inside to pop it out, he can run some nice things. Billy Singleton in traffic and he is fouled. He threw that awry as well. A very fortunate St. John's. Charles Smith, his second personal foul. Bobby Winston's come in. So it's Winston, Smith, Jackson, Turner, and Morning out there for Georgetown. Singleton, Brust, Buchanan, Seeley, and Williams for St. John's. Boyers have run off six in a row. Uh, Billy Singleton was trying to post up. He should bring Morning outside. Here's the screen down for Bryce. Got him. Inside, good catch. Williams takes it up. Sent back by Turner. It got a bound. St. John's will, will it keep it? Yes, yes, they will. Great reaction as Alonzo Morning had committed himself to denying on the outside of the floor. Boy, that's confidence that your back guys will react. 13 blocks for the Hoyas tonight. Having fun down there that's in rejection a, row. That's a season for a lot of clubs. Look at this. Aggressive inside, slapping in the ball. Look who's out of the pack with it. Smith on the break. Jackson the pull-up. Another loose ball leading to a basket. Pressure on one end. And look at this fight now. Jason Williams and Turner. Both benches under full control. The head coaches now come out. Jason Williams and John Turner, the two who are in the middle of it all. I did not see what started it. And John Thompson goes over, puts an arm That's... around Jason Williams, and he's bringing him back together. Both guys chatting with him. He went right after Turner. Now, Louis. Louis saying my guy didn't throw the punch, and that was off the ball. Louis furious because Jason Williams will be thrown out. All right, Jim Burr here. If the... All right, we're going to try to pick it out up high. The five camera will give you a good look at the action off the ball. Here's Jason and Turner, both chesting up from earlier. And there was a punch. Absolutely, but something that happened earlier because they came across the lane and chested up right away. Good control by the officials, composure by the players. All right, the officials are still conferring. Luke on a second talking with John Clockerty now. Of course, if you're thrown out, you're suspended. Second time, you're, you're, you're thrown out of the game. Second time, suspended. Third time, you can be out for the year. That's right. A letter will go to the commissioner's office. There you go. First fight, the ejection from the game. Second fight, you're gone from the game and you sit down for one more. And then the third fight, you watch a lot of games on TV. All right, Jason Williams gone. John Turner gone. Now, again, this will sit with both of these players for the rest of this season. They have already had their one. And now it's going to be Georgetown ball, I believe, on the double at the end of it because of the possession arrow. Well, 
strictly from a basketball sense, that's not a very good trade for St. John's well, as they have just lost their leading scorer and rebound. Yeah, you know, well, let's hope that that shows everybody in the country that this rule is there for a good reason. Yep. Just play basketball. Nobody hurt. No incident of great magnitude because of the control of everybody, including the officials. Jay Williams walking through the Georgetown bench as he now heads to the locker room. John Turner is already gone. Two and two. And then Georgetown should have ball, have the ball on the jump ball situation. Possession arrow. Or excuse me, St. John should have it. All right, Charles Smith will be at the free throw line as the St. John's players huddle up and Smitty makes the first. The Hoyas have run off 10 straight points here. Excellent work by Jim Clockety, John Clockety rather, Jim Brewer and Larry Lembo. Matt Bruss now to shoot a pair. There had to be some banging earlier, the way they went no right question. chest to chest. Down at the other end, maybe on some of the Malik slam, you never know. Bruss made both on his end. Now St. John's ball on the possession arrow. Seven left to go here, second half. Full here in the second half after leading by just eight at halftime. But now Jason Williams and John Turner have been ejected for fighting. And we'll see what happens from here on in. 2-3 zone now. Brust. Reach in foul, Jefferson. They got a break as Sam Jefferson reached in. I think they got to have to do more dribbling like that and then dish out. I just don't think they can pound it in and win, particularly with Jason Williams out of the ballgame. Any guesses as to who does this affect most? I mean, obviously oh, you, on paper it affects St. John's without Jason Williams. Turner had been playing well. Yes, though. he had. As best yeah. I've seen him. Had seen ten him. points, led all scorers for Georgetown. But I, I've got to think in Luke on a second's behalf that most of his offense geared to Jason Williams, and Georgetown has a lot more answers. Rust with seven, the Hoya lead a dozen. Winston finds Jackson, he's left alone, hits it from the corner. The speed of the ball down the floor. It is so difficult to get your people back set and in a stance. That's what they do exceedingly well, the Hoyas. Billy Singleton takes it in traffic and draws a crowd. Might be Jefferson picking up another one. Again, the dribbling causing some problems. Perimeter defense lacking by Georgetown at this point. Georgetown now will be over the limit, and this is really not a team you want to go over the limit against. St. John's is a great free throw shooting team. You can ask Villanova, which was involved in a three point game with this club with three and a half of about four minutes max to play, lost by 19. Mm. Uh, St. John's at 16 of 16 down the stretch at the free throw line. Those friendly rims over there, huh? Jamaica. Billy Singleton, a 77% free throw shooter. Brust is up there at 85. Louis <laughs> on the sideline, kind of second, working the officials, begging for an elbow. <laughs> 13 point Hoya lead, just over 13 minutes to go. Singleton with his usual seven or so off the bench. Charles Smith, to a couple of spectacular passes, but it has not been the dominating Charles Smith he's been in the past couple of weeks tonight. I'd go into the big guy right now, even though Charles is the key guy. I don't think Muto can contend with him. Here he comes again. Just dump it into him, Darren. Jackson takes it instead. The sweeping hook won't go down. Morning, the offensive board. And they've got Singleton with the push. I think he's ready to finish that one off. Still spends. I mean, you, you, you got to pick on him. He's only a freshman, right? We got to find something wrong with his game. Offensively, there's that hesitation when he gets the ball in the paint. Doesn't make the quick move to the back. Well, maybe sometimes he's surprised. You know, they can win without him. They proved that in the first half. Who's the pressure? And the hole. Jaron Jackson. Yep. On Malik Sealy. Pretty good cutter without the ball. We'll shoot it. That's three on Jaron Jackson. And again, St. John's might be able to carve into this lead from the free throw line. Clock stopping right up yeah. their alley. Oh, right up their alley. Mm -hmm. I think Charles Smith, you're right. Get the ball in his hand. Something normally comes to the create. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the free throw is pretty even tonight. Yeah. 
Cini has struggled. He's missed three. You better get it up on the tin. Look at this. Right down. Jackson. Pull up oh. quickly. And that's going to be Morning the push in the back of Matt Brust. And that's four on Alonzo Morning. John Fury is but he did give it the shove. Underneath, he really doesn't have to do this. All he has to do is get close and hold. Doesn't have to push. You lean with your arm against the man. Let the ball bounce along. And maybe brush with some theatrics at well, but you can't move uh, Matt that easily. Okay? He's a senior. <laughs> That's a shame. So Morning sits down with four. Mutombo comes back on the floor. He's playing with three. And now we are going to get a timeout. The Hoyas want it. 12 minutes, 40 seconds left to go. Strange half of Big Monday. Georgetown's lead is 12. 12 minutes, 40 seconds left to go in what's been a strange game. And while we were gone, John Thompson got hit with a technical foul. Now what this does, Mike, Matt Bress shoots one and one. Then they get the two shot on the coach. That's four. They could have a seven-point possibility with a, a normal three-pointer or the new rule three-pointer. So with the clock standing still, John was out of the coach's box at half court on the morning call. Alonzo's call upset him. This is not the guy you want at the free throw line because he'll stand there and drill him all day. See what I mean? What a change now. I'm sure John Thompson hoping it gets his club into it a little more. I don't think they're getting much out of their defense. But that 1-4, if they get it in, St. John's able then to lull you down the floor and do something with the basketball, either by the dribble or get it inside. Matt Brust, 8 of 8 from the free throw line. It's an 8-point game. That's where we were at the half. A little more pressure. The extended zone, a little more active. The 2-3. Cannon finds Muto. Another one from Mutombo. Here comes Smith. Bounce pass. Bryant. Got it. And a foul. Sean Muto should have kicked the ball to the wing. He had Jason Buchanan. Instead, it ends up a three-point, a big turnaround. Possible turnaround. And credit to Kembe Mutombo with starting it all off. You mentioned what a strange game, huh? Wild ebb and flow. Good hold off by Brian on that release. Billy Singleton right there. The Georgetown lead is 10 after St. John's and had a little 10-2 run of their own. So a 2 three. Hands up, extended. And that music is down and through. Right now they're passing around the perimeter, looking for Billy inside. Now what Billy has to do, Singleton, once he gets it, look diagonally across or to the far corner. He's not going to be able to get up. <laughs> I don't think he'll get it off, do you? Well, the thing, is, the thing is, Mutombo, as you say, doesn't buy the head fake. Billy nope. Singleton's got a bundle of nice fakes, but... So that's from not playing over here, right? right? The Gembe will sit and watch him. Yeah, you got to block a few when you're young. He's to feel part of it. Here's Buchanan, the runner, won't go down. Mutombo, the rebound, loose picked up by... Oh, by Mutombo! He got off the floor quickly. That's got to be 10, is it, or 11? We're oh. told just to set the record straight. John Thompson got that technical for arguing a foul call, not for being out of the box. Smitty's got two. And the Hoyas turn the climate up a bit here. 11 to go. They're up by 12. He was out by half court, though, Mike. You can't be out there unless you've got a question of the clock, and both coaches should be there. George the school record tonight for most blocked shots, and we got a long way to go in this one. Just incredible. What do you devise against this interior defense? You're not going to get any easy shots. Mutombo slapped that away, but Singleton came up with it. St. John's down to 13 on the shot clock. 
the year pickoff, Jackson got it. Jackson on the break, takes it for two. Make a mistake, you pay. Bad pass cross court. Not a St. John's kind of pass, and you know, Jason Buchanan, again, seeing each team as he goes around the league, show you a little bit something different. The Hoyas on a six-point run. Brust answers for three. 14 for Matty Brust. 11 here in the second half. The senior teeing it up. Keeping St. John's close. Again, one of the best rivalries that the big created. They use the big guy. Here's a little pick and roll off him, but they use him to cut off him as well. And Tombo gives it back to Bryant. Jefferson will try. Short with it. And Sealy's there. Buchanan looking. Look. Russ tees it up again. Hits again. You've got to get in and make them pinch to freeze the back line. You just can't come down and fire it up or in the box. I'm afraid clubs are just going to have perimeter offenses, but I think you still got to go in and then out. St. John's just won't go away in this game. Look. No, no. Great tenacity to hang tough. I've been very impressed with the defense of Georgetown, and we've seen some great D over the years, too. Smith, a little room, throws it. Oh, it's got it. He got it. Oh. He couldn't see the hoop. Sean Muto blocked off his vision. The kid is tough. Reminds me a little of Lenny Dykster, right? Nails, they call him with the Mets. Right here in the action, Muto overreacting. Now he can't see the basket. Extraordinary. Good reaction defensively, but better offense. Major League, Charles Smith. Having a typical Smith line tonight. 13 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists. Point Hoya lead. Terrence Mullen into the ball game along with Thrust, Wardan, Singleton, and Sealy. Back to the 2 3. Uh, Terrence is going to have to penetrate just as Buchanan did then dish to the side. Thrust running the baseline. Mullen can't shoot the ball yep. outside. He can make that three. Doesn't take a lot of them. Trying to get organized now and they're down and through. Dan's calling for the ball to his credit because he's got the combo covering him. They got to close there that. There it goes. Scoop shot short. A rebound. Sealy back up. Blocked by the combo. I don't think that was a good block. I didn't either, but heck, he's having such a good night. Bryant is fouled by Mullins. Great run, though. Right away, the adjustment from the block to the offensive end as quick as you'll see in the country. That is a new Georgetown record. This one is not a legal one, unless they change the rules. But what the heck? And that one ignites the break. Well, he bats it in the right direction, doesn't he? Isn't that extraordinary? Kind of goes without saying that's a new Big East record, because all the shot blockers hang around down here in Washington. <laughs> and he was looking up to check out his own action. He picks up things quickly. Seven points now in the night for Dwayne Bryant. Just to be able, with Morning on the bench, to have a game like this at St. John's. I mean, there's not much more they can do. I mean, they're running some nice stuff, but the shots they're getting are once again diagram is terrific, but uh, the reactions defensively in deep, extraordinary. You just have the feeling in watching Bill that he's got to get everything. I mean, anything that comes up from about 10 or 12 feet in, you get the feeling he's going to get it. Well, the hurry. Now, you can work on your inside moves. I think you just have to make one fake go up strong or one fake kick it off. Seeley will try outside. Front rims are three. Brush the rebound. Down low. Good move, Seeley. What's wrong? Tombo's not doing his job. 11-point Georgetown lead. Honest to God, the kid got to put a little more effort in it. He's calling out plays now at the top of the key. <laughs> See how they curl off him? 
Imagine when he gets a little offense. Bryant took Mullen. Rebound Singleton. trying to set himself up for our corner. There he is. Mike, I think in this zone, you got to screen him and then kick the ball the other way. Singleton gets the rebound. He wants to go back up, but he's stripped before he can get there and out of the pass. Jackson. Georgetown philosophy, I own the loose ball. 6.45 now to go. Back screen and a clear for Smitty. Yeah, they had it, and Bobby Winston messed it up on him, brought his man in. And he looks like he wants to go one-on-one -on -one with Rush. Ten on the shot clock. Bryant just lost the dribble. Mullen picks it up, and Mullen commits a foul. Well, he's furious because Bryant had missed the dribble, couldn't touch it for a violation. And Terrence Mullen, I think, a victim on that particular play. It's amazing when it's in front of one bench, the tendency, and I can't blame the officials with that impressive figure looming. Dwayne Bryant just lost the dribble and then started to play a little defensive back, trying to get position on Mullen. Mullen pushed him off and got the foul. Well, Bryant did the right thing. He tried to curl, keep him out of it. Yeah. Terrence felt he got the ball and didn't touch. Wayne Bryant, a much improved offensive player as we look at Chris Mullen's younger brother. You know, when you think of the blocks by Georgetown and the St. John's kids keep coming down the floor, hanging around 10, now it's 13. I mean, they've shown me something, too. 6-17 left to go here at the Cap Center. The Hoyas in charge at the moment. It's a 13 point lead for the Hoyas here. Mike Gorman along with Bill Raftery. There's the storyline of tonight's game. St. John struggling from the field. All those big guys in the back will do that to you. Tombo with 12 blocks. Rivaling the new bowl of this building, huh? No question. When he was with the bullets. Here's Darrell Aiken getting his first minutes tonight, bringing it up against the Hoya pressure. Bruss sets himself, misses that three. Charles Smith, the long rebound. Cut off the high post, down and through. Here's Steele Bruss. Look at the hustle play by Bruss. Boy, he does offer it up, huh? Sure does. Comes up. Uh oh. Uh, both Smith, he's writhing in pain too. Charles Smith. Well, we've mentioned how hard he plays all the time. You just can't be in the front row when Matt Preston's is playing. You're going to end up in Toronto. Right here, look at his effort. Oh. Whoa. And I guess he got a court, actually. Yeah, looked like he did. Got a copy between some chairs. But and it's going to take more than that to get the Matt Bruss down. Winston will inbound. Good pressure by Singleton. First down, John in position to use a little more clock if he so decides. Holding 13. Two sharp cuts off the high post. Keep the defense from helping out. Got to pay attention to your man. Look at this. Will Smith had a clear out. Charles. Where Dan is there for the rebound. Seven rebounds for Robert Wood Dan has played some limited minutes because of foul trouble. I think a good education for the freshman for St. John's. I, I'm sure they would like to have played better, but I mean you've got to go through this a few times to see what it's all about. Singleton looking inside. Combo out on him. Now they should dump it the other way with yes. Utombo out there. Darrell Aiken tries and hits a three outside. All of a sudden, 10 again. St. John's extraordinary ability to hang tough. Yes, they are. Should have been put away, not giving or packing attack. Now, when you slow things down a little, you have a problem getting back into it. 
Let's see if they take a long time and end up with another tough one. Still a world to go here, 427. Aiken took away the baseline there. Smith pulls it back out with 15 on the shot clock. Again, not a, enough aggressive play, I think, right now. Dwayne Bryant might have to go. Smitty tries to tee one up, does, and got himself a foul out of it with five on the shot clock. Smitty really making sure that he has the basketball late. I mean, he's in the middle of everything. Don't forget, coming up next here, the second half of Big Monday, and it should indeed be a damn new team. Brando standing by with Dick Vitale. What a great job Bobby Knight has done with that Indiana team after their slow start. And number 10, Michigan. We thought Michigan was tough out in Maui. Boy, they were. No Frieder. Neil Robinson, one of the premier guards himself in the country. To see Ramil and Charles get together mm. on the floor, that'd be fun to watch. There's Glenn Rice, another one. Great basketball player. But this young man is impressing me every time I see him. 15 points tonight, nine rebounds, seven assists. And there were a lot of sequences where he didn't have the ball, and Georgetown got in some problems. Alonzo Mourning's going to come in, and Mutombo's going to stay in. Jaron Jackson goes out. Let's see how this works now. They should be taking half-court jumpers with this lineup. <laughs> Daryl Aiken will bring it up in the face of the defensive pressure. Let's see where St. John's decides to go. 2-3, Mike. Morning out on a wing of it, and combo in the middle. Well, Leach should step in now a little bit. They've really defended Morning. Rust will let fly and hit another three outside. And now he's got himself 20. That's what you have to do, I'm convinced. Go inside, bang it back out. Too much, there are too many negative vibes when you get it inside. Four or five shooting for Matt Russ from beyond the stripe. And now the Hoyas are going to work the clock here as they spread the floor. 3 2 spread, their version of the four corner. St. John's ready and out, trying to deny. Now, Maddie's going to have a tough time denying from Charles Smith. Russ, that is. 3.05 now to go in the game. Ten seconds on the shot clock for the Hoyas. St. John's has to rebound now if they force him into a tough one. Bryant, oh. big shot. Major League, the pull-up square delivered. A dozen for Dwayne Bryant. And Louis Club forced to look hard for the three here. And a man. Good defense. Look at that play. Russ got it back, though. Oops. Got the bounce. Georgetown able with so many good ball handlers. They go Winston on the floor, Bryant and Smith. St. John, seven of nine from beyond the line tonight. They have Louis rethinking his philosophy there. I don't think so. The miss by Winston. Brust has got the rebound. Maddie in a crowd, and we've got a foul, Charles Smith. That was a play where Matt Press was really trying to force the issue. Charles Smith just came up. I don't even think he planned to pick up the chip right here to reach it. Look at him go, though. I'll tell you, that's a tough one, huh? Either way, maybe a play on Mike. Well, it's going to put Matt Brust at the free throw line where he has been near perfect tonight. And once again, the Georgetown Hoyas are not out of the woods. Jaron Jackson comes in. Mutombo sits down. Great night for this kid. A new school and Big East record 12 blocks in the game. The St. John's hasn't really run that ambush half court. You may see that. Yeah, they got the two fists up. So let's see if they run it and get anything out of it. That is nine of nine. Make it 10 of 10 from the free throw line. The Hoyas aren't out of the woods yet. It is down to six. And down on the baseline. Just brushed aggressively out on Bryant, and Matt got him with the body. It's going to send Dwayne Bryant to the free throw line. Well, it did one thing. It stopped the 64% shooter. St. John's has to be alert for the miss. Again, you think of the outside people of Georgetown, and we haven't talked much about Morning, who's been in foul problems, or anybody else down on that box doing any damage to St. John's. Yep. 
And that, that's one of the reasons the score is closer than it should be. Bryant with his 13th point of the night. He was five of six from the strike, hitting his last five straight. Fourteen for Dwayne Bryant. He's got a very solid second half. He's got a dozen here in the second half. Solid kind of a player, though, I think. Oh, yes. Pretty good compliment to Charles Smith. Defense, he lets you know he's around. Man to man. -man. So, Georgetown trying to become a little more pressure-minded defensive. Good switch by Jackson. Well, Dan pops out this morning with him. Thrust, looking for the shot. Gee, the help by Winston. Aiken takes Steps. it in. Pretty good out Aiken. He got it. Count it and a foul. Well, oh, I thought he may have been sliding the feet. And that's five, I think, on Alonzo Morning if they got him. Really a non-factor if it was on Morning. Just take a look now. Aiken with the dribble left. Well, he kept the right foot on the floor. Yep. The kiss. And, of course, Morning, a very tough night for him. Nine points, two rebounds, one block for Alonzo Morning, who's shaking his head, figuring how it happened to him. But Aiken will be at the line, a chance to get his club within five. It brings Matombo back on the floor. Real come down defensively. <laughs> Imagine other clubs losing their star center and still being able to bring, bring the guy off the yeah. bench who's got the league record for block shots. Amazing. Aiken, big miss. Six point game, minute and a half to play. St. John's has got to come out and get Georgetown. Well, they run the 1 3 1. They usually don't extend the floor. They really don't have to shoot it now. Now's a, a milk time. Run it down. They're going to have to give one, I think. I think they're going to have to give one quickly here. And Seeley got Jaron Jackson twice just for good measure. Seeley, I think, saying, like, hey, I'm not going to let him put it up. <laughs> well, so you got to put him on the foul line. If anything, hope that they miss or go one for two if you're St. John's. Of course, Georgetown, very alert for missed free throws, too, Mike. That loose ball, which often becomes theirs. Bill, you can remember back over the past years how the free throw line used to haunt the Hoyas. They are 13 and 14 from the stripe in this half. And they're a much better free throw shooting team than they have been in the past years. And of course, Morning, the guy who I think's had a nice stroke. I just think when they develop a little more of an inside game for him, he's 65% free throw shoot even though he's out. They are going to be a tough out. 13 for Jaron Jackson, 12 of them in the second half. He and Dwayne Bryant have had big second halves along with Charles Smith. So you say, Bill, with three guards have dominated the offense in the second half. Well, they've got to try, Georgetown, to make them use as much clock as they can with good pressure defense. Make the clock work in their favor. Good step in. Guess who? Malik the foul. That's the combo, the one who got there. Michael, that's the first time he stopped the ball down about three feet. Most nights it's been up about 15. Look at his step in. Does he pick up things quickly? There's a great steal by Brust. Takes it in on Bryant, and Matt Brust will go to the free throw line with 46 seconds to go. His club down eight. And he doesn't pack it, does he? No. Really uh -huh. went after it. Uh uh. And then, of course, the aggressive nature he possessed. Strong. He was going to knock Brian out if he had to. 22 second half points for Matt Brust. Georgetown, even on that play, stepping in. Wayne Bryant in position. He made a mistake, but he didn't stop. Got right back. And of course, Matt almost knocking him out of the way. No question, the best offensive half in Matt Brust's career. And St. John's going to take a time out here. 46 seconds left to go. The Redmen are down by seven. Georgetown by seven. 71-64. 46 seconds left to go here at the Cap Center in Landover, Maryland. There is the timeout situation. St. John's obviously the ones looking to use him right now. That's brushed the big second half. Chris Louie with the timeout now able to organize. Lost his first miss of the night, then Bobby Winston lost the ball out of bounds. Don't forget to stick around. Second half of Big Monday is coming up next. Tim Brando, Dick Vitale standing by. Indiana, Michigan. Shoot him, shoot him, Aiken takes the deep pass. Smith right there with him. 
Seeley finds Singleton, who runs to the strike. Skip pass, Brust, nice catch. Oh, not much room. They're gonna have to force it up. Singleton backs himself up, misses from the corner. Jackson the rebound, that's gonna do it. Dwayne Bryant to a crowd, and Billy Singleton the reach-in foul with 24 seconds to go. And Bryant a chance to stretch the lead out to nine. John Thompson talking it over with Bobby Winston. Luke on a second looking on in what has been, Bill. I, you know, I'd like to say I could give you all the reasons for this. This has just been a strange game. Listen to this one. In the last nine minutes, Georgetown has got one field goal. Mm -hmm. I think their offense has been their problem. Defense extraordinary. The Kimby Mutombo just negating every attempt, either by his mere presence or with the 12 blocks. St. John's, on the other hand, just kept hanging in there because of the empty trips that Georgetown happened to have. But this guy has certainly learned a lot quickly. And John Thompson mentioned that a couple of years he's going to be an NBA player. Picks it up fast. 16 for Dwayne Bryant tonight. The Hoyle lead is nine. Rust quickly pushing it up. And it's picked off as he was looking for Seeley in the corner. And quickly St. John's again with the foul. And Bryant will again be back at the free throw line. 16 seconds now to go in again. Billy Singleton with the giveaway back there. But St. John's, if nobody backs off in this league. St. John's certainly didn't this evening. I mean, they didn't have every reason to pack it. A couple of times. Oh, great defensive sequences, giving easy goals at the other end. But hanging tough. You mentioned Matt Bruss with an outstanding ball game. St. John's now at four and three if this holds in the Big East Conference and they'll slip to 12 and five overall. Georgetown recently installed as number two in the country will be 15 and one and five and one in Big East play with the Seton Hall Pirates now slipping at least momentarily into second place in the Big East but they have a game against Pittsburgh on Wednesday. Georgetown has made their last 15 consecutive free throws. Say it again, Michael. <laughs> really? They are. I haven't been able to say that for yeah. a long time. Yeah, John has that. Once he gets morning playing some offense for this club, they're going to be a tough out. Where Dan launches a three, Smith the rebound, and that's going to do it. Darren Jackson throws one up at the buzzer, but the Georgetown Hoyas have come up with the big win here.